When I taught Introduction to American Studies at Barnard College, I asked my students a question that made me enemy professor number nine on the conservative Free Republic website. Roman Polanski's recent arrest reminded me of the public condemnation I received for asking that question. Who is too young to have sex with an adult? My students were willing to discuss the appropriateness of the 16 to 18 range, but were resolutely opposed to going any lower. One said she was so disturbed by the Spanish law that she was reconsidering spending a study year abroad in Barcelona. Perhaps my being a young male professor in a room full of female undergrads made the question especially provocative, but I felt that I was onto something that illuminated what I believe to be one of the core cultural assumptions of Americans. Sex is like walking in traffic or playing with knives, activities we aggressively coerce children not to do. In American culture, to tell a child about the pleasures of sex is equivalent to discussing the thrill of dodging oncoming cars or handling a beat cleaner. There are sex education lectures, public service announcements, relatively high age of consent laws, and most importantly in our silences, we tell children only that sex is dangerous. What I tried to push my students to understand was that there were periods of work underneath the consciousness of their minds as I believe they're all in the minds of the Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office. Yeah, I fucking wonder why they called you an enemy. New channel, same old me. Um, for those of you who don't know, I'm Jeremiah Harding. I uh, put out content on a pretty regular basis, and uh, I also do stuff for an anarchist site called Agorist Nexus, and uh, pretty much anything else I can get money for. So I've been in this long enough to know who a lot of the players in these circles are, and what their general motives are. And one of the things that I've been the most disappointed by has been the stunning lack of accountability and uh, the overwhelming desire to platform people talking about something subversive, even if it's garbage and it might hurt people. Uh, most notably, uh, child predator kind of defenses. So when I saw this excellent episode uh, to listen to, by uh, Bob Murphy, uh, co-host of Thomas Woods, uh, who has some issues of his own. Um, essentially, uh, I, I, it took notice, because I've been in this space for a long time, trying to push predators out of it. Um, those of you who have been following my content for a while know all about the Bunny Riley incident, where I basically proved that there was this uh, pedophile who was trying to uh, normalize pedophilia using libertarian reasoning uh, in, like, a variety of circles under an alternate name. Um, this person uh, went on to later say that he wanted uh, five-year-olds, um, and still he has people defending him, most notably uh, some people who uh, got me removed from a Unity server for even bringing it up. Um... So, generally speaking, uh, I have a reputation in these spaces for being the guy who's willing to bring these sorts of things up and go against them. And so when I saw that this guy who's been relatively popular, and I've seen his face and name everywhere prior to this, 
uh, in 2021 uh, got this kind of coverage, I was like, oh shit, I have to look into this. And uh, look into it I did. Because Bob Murphy's uh, podcast here had this to say. In an episode titled, After further review, it's still wrong for adults to sleep with kids. He writes, on a recent episode of the Unregistered Podcast, Thaddeus Russell interviews philosophy professor Stephen Kirshner on his controversial books. Bob strongly critiques their claims that A. Pro-life people ought to be killing abortionists and B. Adult-child sexual relationships can be healthy. What was that again there, Thad? So I started to look into this guy. And uh, truth be told, I hadn't been into his content much. Um, I don't have time to, like, watch every single libertarian ever or anybody they have on their show. You know, I, I try to be selective and exclusively watch conspiracy theories and sonic content. Um, but generally speaking, um, I've heard good things about him, so this was fucking strange, right? It's strange that uh, the libertarian community would uplift somebody who's saying that it's okay to fuck kids as an adult. Um, you would think. But apparently not. Um, at least with some of them. Because some of them still defended him afterward, and some of them were still willing to buy his bullshit. Now this happened in February of two years ago, right? February of two fucking years ago, um, and I planned on making some sort of response to that episode and response to the situation at hand, uh, but I didn't. Um, it sort of got backburnered like so many of my other projects. I really need to get better about that, but like, ultimately, the, uh, the, the general gist of uh, the, the response to it was most people who actually listened to Bob Murphy were with him. Like, yeah, this is fucked up. And some of those people were sharing articles that he wrote. And um, among the things that he wrote was an article where he was defending Roman Polanski. Now that caught my eye because that's something I could read right quick. Why would he defend a fucking kid rapist? Like, even if you thought the libertarian trope of, like, you know, fucking stereotypical, like, but what if the child consents, though? Uh, even if you still bought into that bullshit, um, you would still be remiss to find somebody who thought Roman Polanski got kind of the short shrift, you know, drugging and raping a 13-year-old girl. And if you don't know about that story, let me tune you into it. She told the grand jury that he approached her in the bathroom and told me to go in the other room and lie down. She went into the room and then asked to go home. He said he would take her home later. He began kissing her and then began performing oral sex on her. Quote, I was ready to cry. I was kind of, I was going, no, come on, stop it. End quote. In light of the champagne and the quailing, Samantha said, I was kind of dizzy. You know, like, things were kind of blurry sometimes. I was mostly just off and on saying, No, stop. Polanski began having intercourse with her and asked whether she was on the pill. She said no, and when her last period was, she couldn't remember. Polanski said, Oh, I won't come inside of you then. Then he lifted up my legs further and went in through my anus, she said despite her saying that she didn't want him to. Samantha said she did not fight back physically because I was afraid of him, though she continued to ask him to stop. In his book, Polanski described the sexual encounter this way. I will repeat, in his book, Polanski described the sexual encounter this way. Quote, we write ourselves and each other. She said she was feeling better. Then very gently I began to kiss and caress her. After this had gone on for some time, I led her over to the couch. There was no doubt about her experience and lack of inhibition. She spread herself and I entered her. She wasn't unresponsive. While Polanski and Daly were in the bedroom, Angelica Hudson, Jack Nicholson's girlfriend, arrived at the house. Soon after, Polanski and Daly made an awkward departure. Quote, I didn't mention 
to make me mother the TV room, though that must have been pretty obvious, you know. Samantha had hurried out before he did. Quote, I was sitting in the car and I was trying. Bailey testified, according to Polanski, Samantha talked a lot during the drive home and mentioned that she was studying a Midsummer's Night Dream in school. Quote, I tried not to wince when she started spouting Shakespeare in a strong valley accent. Before they reached the daily home, she testified, he said to her, Don't tell your mother about this, and don't tell your boyfriend either. This is our secret. So obviously that sounds like a great fucking guy to have on your podcast who would defend that guy, right? I don't buy for a second that Thad didn't know about this stuff. So why did Thad defend this guy if Thad is such a good and intelligent and smart person that you want to have him on your fucking podcast? Riddle me that, bitch. But we'll get into that a little later and get into some of the shadier developments here. Um, I just thought I'd bring that up because plenty of people have had him on their show and loved having him on their show. Um, so it means they either didn't do this kind of research or they didn't care. Either one is kind of fucking bad. Like, Roman Polanski was a grade-A piece of fucking shit. And... Anyone who's looked into this for even a fucking second knows that. But Thaddeus just said that it had to start the conversation on the debate of age of consent. That's who you're dealing with here. And what's more, so many people who had and still have Thaddeus Russell on their shows and promote his stuff um, are all about opposing Jeffrey Epstein. But Roman Polanski had to move to a country with an age of consent of 15 in order to escape judgment. He had to do that because he eventually pled guilty on a plea deal, so he fled to France, where 15 is the age of consent, just a year above Epstein's youngest victim. And what was Thaddeus Russell's prime defense of, like, these shady views on age of consent? Well... Other countries have better laws than we do. So which is it? Libertarians? Conservatives? Anyone? Do you really hate Epstein? Or do you just want the clout that comes with it? And then you'll have people on who defend him in principle. That's a good fucking question, isn't it? But he blocked me, and that kicked me out of the room. And then later, he cried about it and said he actually blocked me because I'm an insufferable faggot. If bringing up an article that a guest of yours wrote to hold that guest accountable and prevent them from being platformed like they didn't fucking say that um, gives you the ick, that's not anybody else's fault but fucking yours. But so many people in libertarian spaces are totally fine having totally objectionable thinkers on and they say it's just a have a conversation so the fuck what would you have jeffrey epstein on your fucking podcast would you platform him would you be basically uncritical of him and what he supported because if not don't have people on who defend people like Jeffrey fucking Epstein. Libertarians stop platforming predators and the defenders of predators challenged. Impossible. Failed. But if you can believe it, it gets fucking worse. Because guess what? He had on a fellow traveler, a professor who also defends child predators. Um, and they both had a giddy little laughing session about how much they want to defend the concept of adult child sex. Welcome, Stephen Kirshner. Imagine that an adult 
male uh, wants to have sex with a, a 12 year old girl, imagine that she's a willing participant. A, a very standard, very widely held view that there's something deeply wrong about this, and it's wrong independent of it being criminalized. It's not obvious to me that it is in fact wrong. I think this is a mistake. And I think that exploring why it's a mistake will tell us not only things about adult child sex and statutory rape, but also about fundamental principles of morality. Even if you are looking for a threshold, let's say there's a threshold, I'm, I'm making this number up, but let's say it's at age eight. Um, still, that tells you that some adult child sex is permissible. Second, the notion that it's wrong even with a one-year-old is, is not quite obvious to me. There are reports in some cultures of grandmothers filleting their, uh, the baby boys to calm them down when, when a colicky. Now, I don't know if this is true, but this, this is sort of widely reported as occurring in, in, in at least one culture. And it, it working, that the grandmothers believe, believe this actually works. It's hard to see what would be wrong with it. So, yeah, I, I guess I think, no, I, I don't think there's a blanket period beyond which this is permissible. If we're interested in willing participation, which is the way I structured it, then yeah, there's a, there's a point below which people aren't willing participants in anything because they don't have intentions or they don't have the sort of mental states that allow for willing participation. But no, I, I don't. I don't think it's blanket wrong at any age. So that's Stephen Kirshner, and you can see why Thaddeus Russell likes him because they think alike, and. I'm not just going to say that, you know, I'm going to play his own words on that. But basically, Stephen here challenges the concept of an age of consent at all and claims that basically there is no base threshold. None. At all. And he literally made the argument that one-year-olds could potentially consent. One-year-olds! But Steve didn't just leave it there. No, he wrote an entire fucking book about it. And, like many other intellectuals in intellectual spaces, uh, guess what? You write a book, and a bunch of people are going to have you on their show. At least, you know, if you're not me. Most people won't have me on their show because they're afraid I'm going to poke holes in their bullshit and set fire to their sacred cows. But ultimately, uh, they'll have people like this on because they wrote books and because it's a good way to clout farm. Like, yeah, you know what? Um, maybe we can talk about adults fucking kids because you wrote a book, Stephen. That's what Thaddeus thought. And Thaddeus went on to interview Stephen about this very subject. My guest this week is a professor of philosophy at the State University of New York at Fredonia. He's the author of nine books, all of which would make your grandmother freak right out. He has argued against morality and responsibility and in defense of adult child sexual relationships. He's a man after my own heart. You hear that? A man after my own heart. A guy who wants to excuse sexual contact with one-year-olds, and up. That's a man after Thaddeus Russell's own heart. A guy I discovered a while ago, I didn't tell you this, Steve, but uh, someone, I think a philosophy professor, told me that I should have you on my show because he is so unregistered and so renegade. <laughs> He's perfect, and he says all these wild things, and I said, like, what? Well, here's the title of, of some of his books. And you've written four books, nine books, I'm sorry, nine books, just four of them are titled um, The Case Against Morality and Responsibility. And then this one, this one you got into quite a bit of heat over, of course. Uh, adult Child Sex, colon, A Philosophical Defense, Steve? So after having a short little chop-up session about why pro-life people should start shooting abortion doctors, yeah, that happened, uh, Stephen starts to get into his views on why adult child sex is not that bad, okay? All right, there's that book. Nice, love it. Um, and this is probably the maybe the least controversial one. Which one do you want to do next? <laughs> uh, let's do the adult child sex. That's always a big seller. Oh yeah. Well, that I, I had um I had good friends who said, "Are you crazy? Do not write that book." Man, listen, you're talking to a guy who for 25 years has been making arguments 
more or less in defense of adult child sex in classrooms. That is a reference to a thing he also referenced in his Daily Beast article. And his Daily Beast article included him admitting to pressuring his students to answer questions uh, about whether or not they support adult child sex and what the actual threshold should be. He thought he was educating people by bringing this up. But to me, all this sounds like is justifying something or other for maybe personal reasons, because it seems like a very strong vendetta on his part. And I can't tell why other than something nefarious. Uh, and I, don't know if the, I don't know if it's the same argument as yours, but I even authored a piece in the Daily Beast in which I called into question the age of consent laws. Oh, um, which is, yeah. you know, and I'm, I brought to bear the arguments I was making in class. And I'm, I'm going to see how they, whether they jive or not. So, so let's start there. Like, why on God's green earth are you as crazy as I am in, in taking on this argument? Note the framing here, because Thad is trying to frame himself as some sort of like, you know, bold renegade. And I even deleted some stuff where he said that it was like the dumbest thing you can do if you want a respectability and being invited to dinner parties and a career and shit. And it's like, yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why people wouldn't want somebody at their dinner party who might want to fuck their kid. And, and, you know, maybe you don't, Thad, but you sure defend people who do an awful fucking lot. And you sure do defend people who defend people who do an awful fucking lot. Yeah. Stay off my property. Forever. There's actually some meta studies which seem to suggest that in some cases, uh, at least with regard to um, adult males and um, underage uh, males, that it's not harmful or... Mm -hmm. If it is harmful, we can't decide whether the harm is due to the sex itself or the fact that society goes berserk over it. I guess the public school system, Boy Scouts, the Catholic Church, I guess the, you know, foster care system, which traffics them as well. I guess all these boys were just exaggerating it and it wasn't harmful. And he can't tell whether the harm comes from being raped or the social response to being raped. Fucking wild. Bonkers. And this man gets a platform on Thaddeus' show. Because Thaddeus wants to excuse a wide variety of shit in this regard. And you'll see more of that coming up here shortly. But I just thought I'd stop here for a second and show you that this is how these people think. And Thaddeus was nodding along and being all complicit and shit in this narrative because Thaddeus likes this narrative. It suits him for some reason. And so one of the articles I was reading said, look, this is wrong. We don't need to know whether it's harmful. The empirical question of whether or not there's any long-term harm we could track on this is really beside the point. And I was kind of struck with a question. I thought, well, it's not obvious to me why that is. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, the standard kind of other argument is that it's a right infringement. And I wasn't sort of convinced by that argument. Mm -hmm. And also when it comes to hebophilia rather than sort of adult child sex, so sex with like young teens, it's not clear to me. I mean, look, there's at least some reason to believe that, um, that, that individuals are, you know, designed by evolution to begin reproduction at that period. So if they're mm -hmm. designed by evolution to begin reproduction, it's not clear why it would be physically either harmful mm -hmm. um, or emotionally harmful. And so... It isn't clear to him how adults having sex with teens is either physically or emotionally harmful. I'd say ask Roman Polanski's victims, but we already know how Thad feels about them. I'd say as Epstein's victims, but being consistent with Roman's victims, yeah, I already know how Thad feels about that. And by extension, Stefan Kirshner, who is actively running cover for this kind of mentality that led to those sorts of circumstances. And it gets worse. So there was kind of like three different explanations, none of which convinced me. One was that it was harmful, and I thought, well, there's at least some empirical, there's at least... 
a, a controversy whether that's empirically true. Mm -hmm. There's the right infringement case that we don't get, they, they can't give their valid consent and therefore it's wrong mm -hmm. in virtue of being a right infringement. And there's a view that it's exploitative, that even mm -hmm. if it's not harmful, yes. and even if it's not a right infringement, it's somehow an exploitation. Right. I've, I've heard all these, yes, okay. Right, so those right. are the three dominant arguments. And none of these yeah. convince me, so the-, the Me neither. The, and there we have it. The thesis of Thaddeus Russell's entire approach here is that he's not convinced that it's harmful, that it's exploitative, or that it's a rights violation. For an adult to have sex with a minor. And now we know why he defended Roman Polanski. On the rights-based argument, I think, look, we, we make children do all sorts of things that Thank we don't you. want to do. Right? Thank you. you know, we make them go to, they go to church. We make them go to the temple. We tell them to go to school. They got to go to the dentist. They got to go to their, their sister's ballet recital. And, yeah. and we don't care what they say. And, and they want to do things we say no, right? They, right. they say, I want to stay up and watch, you know, Creature Feature on WPIX until, you know, Thank two you. in the morning. We say, well, it's tough. That, that, that is all a child's life is, is coercion, right, that's right. Is coercion by adults. To make, and often to make the child do something for the adult's pleasure only. That's exactly right. Yeah. You say, yeah, you're, you're going to go to your great uncle's funeral, even though you want to go, and right. it's not in your interest. And here's another foundational plank. Neither of these people see sex as fundamentally any different from any other action. They don't look at the sort of cognition or the psychology behind the sex to realize that it's how humans fundamentally develop their reward circuits that it's the way that humans are programmed to exist, that it's the way we move forward, and that until you understand that maybe somebody might be detrimental to your goals of moving forward, and that they might be doing you harm, you shouldn't fuck. Much less fuck somebody who's already much more developed than you, cognitively speaking, so that they can have their way with you a weaker person of less intellectual and cognitive capability and less stature to stand up to them and even talk about what happened. Remember, this is our secret, Roman Polanski said. So when these people are talking about it, they're talking about it, yeah, it's no different than fucking soccer. It's no different than telling kids to go to bed to go tell them to go to bed with you. This is evil. And these people still got on shows, still got support. Thaddeus Russell, especially, even after he nodded along, left, said thank you, said he's not convinced either, and co-signed literally all of it. This isn't an intellectual discussion designed to stimulate some new and fangled idea. This is a way for him to have somebody on with official credentials to co-sign what he's saying so that he can just say, yeah, see, I was right. Kid fucking isn't that bad. In addition, hmm. at least in some cases, certainly with regard to hepophilia and sort of underage sex. Um, what's, with, what's, with the word, what's the word about hepophilia? Hepophilia would be like kind of young, younger teens. Okay. You know, just statutory rape cases, right? Where the person's under the age of, age of consent, which okay. actually, as, as you know, varies quite a bit between states. Indeed. Yeah, you know all about that, don't you, Thad? You know all about that from your defense of somebody who fucked a 13-year-old after drugging her and then fled to France when he pled guilty for it. You know all about that, because you defended him. Um, actually, it's not pedophilia, it's hebophilia. And I'd thank you to remember that I'm not a pedophile, I'm a hebophile. I only like 13 and up. I'm so much better than a pedophile. And it's totally not an arbitrary distinction, irrespective of what the word actually means based on etymology and roots. I'm saying this because I'm smart, and I know the distinctions because I've looked up what I think I can get away with in various places. Let me change your laws now. <laughs> I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> Trust me. In those cases, the individual seem to be willing, right? So it's not like you even have, you know, you're sort of dragging some kicking and screaming into doing something you don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
mostly because they don't understand it or the ramifications, and sometimes because they're drugged, like the 13-year-old Roman Polanski fucked. The third thing about exploitation is really bizarre because exploitation occurs when there's a uh, kind of a transaction and both sides benefit from it, but one side, usually the side, it, the, the side of the stronger bargaining position takes an unfair share of the transaction surplus. That is, they take the more than just share of the benefit of, of, the, of the, the transaction. Right. And you think, okay, well, even if that's true, one, um, I, it's never clear to me why exploitation is wrong. Um, I, it's never clear to me why exploitation is wrong. But even if that were not the right. case, right? Because it's a mutually beneficial exactly. trade. Yep, yep. But even if that were not the case, it wasn't clear to me, well, um, you know, I mean, wh how do we know that the, that the underage, you know, the, the, the young teenager or the, the late pu pubescent child isn't gaining as much from this, especially if they're a willing participant? Mm. And even if they didn't gain as much, how do we know that there aren't another, uh, enough of other benefits, right? If someone, you had a tutor who's mm. tutoring them in, you know, literature or the violin, mm -hmm. why wouldn't the package of benefits be mm -hmm. such that they're gaining more than mm -hmm. their fair share of the transaction mm -hmm. surplus yeah you know uh I, I just i'm teaching them piano i'm helping them with their homework I, I i taught this one to color pretty well um you know i raped this one um and then like i i i went into the kitchen i helped them cook some food uh this other one gave me oral um you know just a standard day of somebody helping kids and this is just part of the package deal. It's not exploitative or abusive or a rights violation or anything like that. It's just fucking commerce. So I thought, well, look, there are three different explanations. The first one's, you know, in, in empirical controversy. And it's, a, it's an odd view that whether or not it's permissible depends on the outcome of these studies. Right. <laughs> the right. second view just seems to be a, a non-starter, right? We just don't, we don't think that children have to give valid consent for pretty much anything we do to them. Right. Especially if they're willing participants, you know, you know, we, we don't, we don't, we don't say, well, a child can't play kickball because they can't foul the consent to it, even right. though they really want to play kickball. Right. And then last exploitation, again, I, I don't think exploitation is wrongful. I'm not exactly sure even what makes something exploited. Are you starting to see why I hate these people? Are you starting to see why for years I have been trying to get these people pushed out of these circles? Because maybe people who don't understand why exploitation is wrong and the people who agree with and platform them and nod along and co-sign this idea while they talk about sex with kids as transactional, maybe they shouldn't be involved in a space that's supposed to protect people from abuse and exploitation. Maybe it's not different because it's not coming from a state. Right. Exactly. If there were, I'm not sure what makes it wrongful. And even if it were wrongful, it's not clear that it occurs in uh, most cases of adult child sex. We are surrounded by literal demons and monsters. And I call this hell home. <clears throat> um, I, the other thing I felt free to write it is because um, I don't have, I, I'm not a pedophile. Man, y'all got me pressing X up in here. I'm pressing X to doubt up in here. You got me pressing X up in here. So, um, and I don't engage in adult child sex. So I thought in some sense, look, I don't care if people attack me personally on it because it's not something that involves me directly. Mm -hmm. Whereas someone who is actually interested in this stuff, obviously they'd want to keep a low profile. They wouldn't want to argue for it. So in some sense, I'm free to make the argument in the sense that, Whatever, you know, you can call me all the names you want. It doesn't mean that I, it doesn't yeah. diffuse my argument. I mean, you heard him. He said you could call him all the names you want. I would never co-sign calling people a bunch of names, especially on mass online, you know. Uh, but he says it's fine. So, you know, it's just, you know, I, I would never say to do that to anyone. The only time I've ever gotten a death threat, really, from something I've written was the piece in the I wrote it in the Daily Beast about 12 years ago um, about Roman Polanski. I really have to read that. That sounds interesting. Yeah, real, it's a real short piece, but I, I come up with a, it's you and I, I think very much alike on this. You know, I kind of attack all those arguments. Aw, isn't that adorable? They think alike on this. They think alike on this. 
and he's still defending his piece, defending a guy who raped a 13 year old he drugged uh that are made yeah i mean i say i say come on children are coerced all day every day to do all sorts of stuff including stuff that is purely for the adults gratification which is also dangerous like like playing tackle football right how many boys how many boys are coerced by their dads into playing tackle football when they really don't want to which we now know causes serious brain damage right right Right. and there's need i go on i mean there's just time after time, you know, instance after instance of, of, of adults coercing children to do things that they don't want to do. It's just nonstop coercion. It's, it's really a plantation. I mean, that's the family. Right. Is it not like it, it, there's no freedom in a family? You hear that? You hear that? There's no freedom in the family. That means that that's the way it should stay and it shouldn't be criticized at all. And those sorts of things shouldn't be stopped. Those sorts of things should be used as an excuse to fuck kids. That's what that is saying here. And that's what Steven agrees with. We shouldn't improve the paradigm. We should use it as an excuse to be just as fucking bad and worse. And, you know, it's funny. Steven says he doesn't understand why exploitation is bad. But then Thaddeus literally compares the way he perceives the family home to be as a plantation that compares it to slavery. And this, this comparison doesn't do enough to make Steven's fucking nerd brain click over and say, well, maybe the kids shouldn't be sex slaves too. Just a little food for thought. Right, that, that's right. And there's also like oddities. So... Take statutory rape law. Now, of course, the age of consent varies from some states, but take a state where um, the age of consent is 17 or 18, and let's right. say there's a four-year window. So you have a, a, a 23-year-old has sex with a 16-year-old, mm-hmm. and you think, okay, well, that, that's a felony. The person's going to do you know, real prison time for that. Yep. And you think, yeah, but if the 16-year-old had sex with another 16-year-old, that you think, okay, well, at least in some cases where they have Romeo and Juliet clauses, which, which right. require you to be in like a three or four year window. You say, well, that's okay. I think, well, well, why is it harmful or right infringing or have some other wrong making feature for a 16 year old woman to have sex with a 23 year old, but it's not if she has sex with a, a 17 year old. Like what, mm-hmm. what happens in the six years <clears throat> that turns nearly identical sex into uh, from from perfectly, um, yeah. you, know, you know, outside the criminal law to something that's a serious felony. Yeah. Gee, it might have something to do with the fact that uh, the 23-year-old is basically nearly fully developed in their prefrontal cortex, and the 16-year-old girl, not woman, like you wanted to frame it as, uh, girl, is not, and is nowhere near what that is. Now, now, one of the arguments you get is, well, look, overall, the consequences are better if we have this law in place. Okay, I mean, perhaps, I mean, per, I mean I'm, I'm not entirely sure this is the case, but one, the burden should be on the people trying to criminalize it to show this is the case. Mm-hmm. Given how infrequently the stuff is prosecuted, it's not obvious to me that they could carry the burden. But in addition, we've got to be a little careful about these sort of good consequences argument because there's lots of things that, at least I think we should protect, we should protect liberty even if it doesn't have the best results. So I'm, I'm kind of a liberty freak and I tend to think, look, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that are, that are probably overall pretty harmful. Um, things, for example, like, uh, you know, um, eating a fast food, you know, or um, drug use or mm-hmm. dropping out of high school or, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. So um, it's not clear to me that um, we should criminalize these things even if they have overall worse results an adult fucking a child to these people is comparable in level of harm to eating fast food or dropping out or doing drugs that says everything you need to know because those are personal choices they don't involve another person they don't involve another person who is exploiting your desire for copulation and your lack of maturation and cognitive development to have a sexual transaction 
that they couldn't get from, let's just say, their normal target demographic. There's a reason that these people don't fuck somebody in their economic and physical and neurological bracket. And it's not because it's the exact same thing. So let's not pretend that raping a kid is just as bad as having a Big Mac supersize. Motherfucker! So consequences are not going to justify criminalization in these other cases. It's not clear that merely because it produces bad consequences to allow the sex to occur, does that mean we should criminalize it? Right. So that's my concern. Yeah, no, that's great. And uh, to me, I always say, uh, so what is the magical thing that happens on the moment you turn 18? Like clockwork, when these people, these sorts of people, want to bring up this sort of argument for these sorts of people, they always say magic. It's magical. It's magical. Nobody here is advocating magic or saying that it's a magical reason that this is happening. And while I'm at it, most witches would find you fucking disgusting, both of you. What is, why, is, there's this magical, gigantic wall between 18 and after 18, where you're, I mean, this is a radical change. You are, you can have legal sex one minute, you can't have legal sex one minute, and the next you can, I, you know, it's utterly bizarre. But then, to me, also the really devastating, just empirical case against it is um, Americans are so sure we're right about this, you know, um, but look around the world. Look at, look at age of consent laws around the world. I mean, you have, you have European countries and advanced industrial democracies that have age of consent laws that are 13, 14, and 15. In fact, that's the norm in Europe for those ages. Roman Polanski intensifies. We are very much higher than almost all other countries. Um, they range all over the map, all over the world. From th I think some countries have it at twelve, even right. twelve they, to twenty-four. You know, right. so and they range considerably with the U.S. too. Between those who have like yeah. sixteen and those at eighteen. That's right. The, the, the states that have Romeo and, and Juliet uh, laws and, and those that don't. Right. No, and also you look at human history, right? I mean, the the, the notion that we have these these statutory rape laws is, is a relatively new thing in human history. I mean. Sure. You know, as, as you know, much better than me, recent, is rel fairly recent development. Oh, yeah. Pedera um, both pederasty and incest were, they may have been illegal in places, but the, the, the law wasn't really enforced, certainly through the Middle Ages. I mean, that's, that's pretty much, I think, the consensus is that there was incest that was pretty rampant and no one just talked about it. it just, there was no discourse about it. It was a non-issue until the modern era. Woo! Are we bringing up incest now? Because holy shit. That has demonstrable harms, too. Literally, incest has genetic harms. It has harms for the family structure. It has harms for long-term lineage growth. It has harms everywhere you look. And the fact that it was happening a lot, that's not fucking science. That's, that's fucking appeal to common practice. And there was also a partial reason it was happening a lot, because of, like, essentially racist and uh, jingoistic notions that unless you kept it in the family, you weren't keeping it pure. That's not fucking better! Thad! Roman Polanski's butt boy Thad! That's not demonstrably better! You've put up a magic wall b between you and your understanding of empirical science. Because, guess what? The data tells us these days, that not only is incest incredibly bad, but so is pedophilia. So are these relations between adults and children. Because it takes advantage of their fucking lack of cognition. It takes advantage of their psychological deficit. But that doesn't matter to you, does it, Thad? Because you just want to claim that any sort of criticism here is magical thinking. And then defend incest as well, because why not add that to the pile, Thad? Right, and on, on some accounts, some of these laws were really aimed at preventing rape. You don't say. Yeah. They weren't. They weren't. I mean, and also, you have then these other exceptions, in addition to the Romeo and Julia laws. You have the kind of marriage ex exceptions. Yep. So somehow, yep. when you have marriage, the sex that would otherwise be a felony mm -hmm. becomes something that you can't prosecute, depending on the state.
which tells us that what we're really trying to do is we're trying to protect against emotional harm or against sort of unwanted pregnancy. It's not clear that the sex per se is the problem. It's the consequences. The sex is what causes the consequences, Stephen. The sex is what causes the consequences, Stephen and Thad. How is this not obvious? And, and again, I may, you know, that might be, I'm, I'm not completely unsympathetic to the notion that certain things have such horrendous consequences in the aggregate that we want to criminalize them. Mm -hmm. But I think, one, it's clear who should bear the burden of proof on that. And two, um, there's a certain price to be paid. I mean, every time you put someone in jail for years, there's a huge cost to the individual, let alone to society. Yeah. And you have to show that, you know, the cost benefit analysis supports this. There's a very slick, sophisticated <clears throat> postmodern argument, I guess, um, that says that the culture is what causes the harm in people. The cultural assumptions right. is, what, is what causes people to feel as if they've been harmed, which ends wow. up feeling like actual harm, right? And we know psychosomatic illnesses, it's sure. real. It's real, okay? I've had them. I know, you know I don't deny it at all. Yeah. Their realness in that way, but there is no physical basis for it. Um, and and there have been studies that have shown, I think there have been many studies, that I think a majority of so-called victims of mm -hmm. child sex abuse, basically, um, felt bad mostly by the fact about the fact that they enjoyed it. Of uh, so-called victims uh, Child sex abuse. That's interesting. That there's a guilt, huge amount of guilt about having enjoyed it, or having wanted it in some way, right? right. Um, among many. I could go over more of this video, but I think that relatively well covers all the salient points with regard to this hack job of an interview. Because his basic premises is that it's not exploitation, it doesn't cause harm, that it's not a rights violation any more than telling them to go to soccer is. That, yeah, sure, it's a plantation, but it's a plantation in the same way that everything else is a plantation, so we might as well keep the plantation. And that really the kids just liked it too much, and that's why they're traumatized. Thaddeus Russell, everyone! Thaddeus motherfucking Russell, everyone! So to start this off, I'll say that uh, Eliza Blue is a lying, censorious hack. And um, she will threaten your channel. She will uh, get your Twitter suspended, your YouTube taken down. Uh, anything she wants, really, because she's got a direct line to so many people. Uh, if you have the audacity to share a screenshot that is from a video which has been public for six years... Um, because it kind of pokes holes in some of her story. I might be doing a video on that at some point. But her story is that she's a sex trafficking survivor. Um, and the video in question uh, is sort of evidence to the contrary, that she did something voluntarily uh, and was celebrating being around all this fancy equipment and shit. And then... Uh, you know, suddenly when people are sharing this screenshot, uh, which comports with what she was saying and what she's made public before, the kinds of things that she doesn't like discussing at all. I mean, I, I don't know if I, I mean, for me to tell my story at length, uh, is going to take a while. I don't even, I don't like, even need that. To questions about my story is going to take a while. So I know the basics so of your story because I, I've listened to your podcast. Right, so what's. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what the question is. Well, I can ask I mean, you I the question. I didn't agree to this. I didn't agree to this. All I agreed to was answering a few questions about Twitter. Well, okay, sure. That's totally fine. But can I just, can I ask you the questions or email you the questions and you can decide if you want to answer or not? 
I mean, did you did you ask Amanda in advance to do that? Uh, no, I, I told her that I wanted to ask you about the Twitter stuff and about your own okay. story. Okay, so you deceived Amanda, didn't tell her everything you wanted to ask no, me, I, and then you I, I, got I, a survivor on the phone no. and started asking her about her personal trauma. No, I, 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 that's, okay. not, that's not what happened. I said... Katie, I, think, I think we're probably going to be done here. Please, uh, next time you want to speak to a survivor about their trauma and bring up their own past... I literally asked her... Uh, just, I, here, I'm going to read you... I'm going to read you... The, I'll read you the message that just, I sent just her. Please be honest in advance because I, 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 I won't. Because there are times when I feel cool about talking about it, and there's other times when I don't. I'll read you so the I message that I sent it to her. Advance. You're not no, listening to me. I was totally comfortable talking about Twitter. If you were going to ask me I, about my you, own tra traumatic, traumatizing story, I would have appreciated a little bit of a heads up. And you know what? I think you're a cool person. I, I always have. And I know you're cool with Tim Dillon, and I, I, I would have appreciated a little bit more respect just off... You're not listening to me. I Here's what I said to her. I said, I'm interested in the Twitter changes as well as her history as a survivor. That is what I told okay, her. Okay, then I'm going to speak to then I'm going to speak to her about that cuz then she messed up and didn't tell me what's up. Okay, well so can I, I apologize for blooping out on you? She should have told me that. I'm going to go get in her ass. So Can, can I ask way, you the I'm question? Not, I'm not cool with it. It's been a long few days and honestly, I don't feel like rehashing my whole own trauma on the phone with somebody I don't know. Now, this is new information, right? I'm not saying that uh, that anyone had access to this years ago. Um, except, of course, the World Star Hip Hop video that she was really excited to be in until it poked holes in her story. That That's pretty old. Uh, but the incident I'm about to discuss was before a lot of these revelations were linked together by people bold enough to ask questions um, and not be emotionally manipulated into not asking questions. Uh, but just to be clear, I already asked questions because she was all too happy to join Thaddeus Russell on a podcast called Liberty Lockdown on YouTube uh, to defend Thaddeus Russell. And you know what else? As fucking usual, I was basically one of the only ones to bang the drum on that at all and say, I don't fucking give a shit that she showed up for that podcast, he's still garbage. And he should still be opposed and held accountable for the garbage he said. I was one of the only people willing to call out the bullshit uh, even after she was on there. A lot of other people were just like, yeah, you know, it was such a good podcast and I'm so glad we had this conversation. Fuck you! I was one of the only people willing to call this out and uh, at the time... Uh, at the time, um, the uh, podcast had really good numbers, and basically nobody said that it was a bad podcast, even though it said some really fucking bad things, as you're about to see. But, you know, I was putting my neck on the line, um, and basically, after that, after I got kicked out of that uh, anarchist uh, group message on Twitter by somebody who called me an insufferable faggot... Um, after that, I got blackballed. People would stop talking to me because they realized I was a threat to their bullshit numbers. Because they realized I would hold them accountable and I wouldn't fucking stop. So, you know, fuck them. And she was there to do that after the article was written. After the... Stephen Kirshner interview after all the stuff about Stephen Kirshner came out. So this child trafficking survivor is totally willing to help rehabilitate the image of somebody who's basically encouraging child trafficking? I didn't support her for that reason and for the other reason that it seemed awfully convenient that she was starting to advocate, you know, an easier reporting mechanism for child pornography and uh, maybe removing pedophiles from Twitter entirely, like a long time after I started my campaign to do exactly that. I still have my uh, survey up on change.org if you want to sign it, but basically I wrote this survey up that said, you know, uh, we should either ban children from this app 
we should ban pedophiles, or we should at least make it more reasonable in terms of reporting. There shouldn't be a separate page you have to go to. Are you kidding me? Like, it was so easy for people to get away with it because a lot of people just had no idea how to report it if they saw it. No idea how to report it if it happened to them. Um, and now it's in the handy drop-down, so that is a partial victory. But to be super clear here, Eliza comes in and starts saying, like, a lot of the same stuff I was and getting all this attention gobbled up from all of these people who hate me for having said this, for having opposed pedophiles in these circles, and suddenly she rides in, she's got the numbers, she's got the clout, and these people are all too happy to catch drips right in their mouths. So, I was a little bit bitter, and I was a little bit suspicious, and the suspicion and bitterness only fucking peaked when this trafficking survivor decided to help Thaddeus Russell who was not only a uh, defender of pedophiles, but um, somebody who platformed, somebody who wrote a whole fucking book defending pedophiles and is on record defending pedophiles. Two members of what the uh, neo-reactionaries would normally call the cathedral, literal fucking professors advocating pederasty, but suddenly the right loves these people. I wonder the fuck why. Could it be a massive grift and they're all too happy to ride her coattails no matter where they take them? Not asking any questions? Not pressing her pretty much at fucking all? I guess so. Because this is how that went. Hello. Uh, take a seat, Mr. Russell. <laughs> why, are, why are you here today? I already have. <laughs> I'm sitting down. What do you want? <laughs> I was doing, I was doing my, my Chris Hansen impersonation. It was just a stupid joke. I mean, if you ask me, it would be great if Chris and Thad had a little sit-down chat. I think that'd be great. I think it'd be great if Chris Hansen uh, could serve that function again. Um, instead, he's enabling Blair White while she pretends Clover gender is real. Uh, it might make a video on that, too. I have a commentary channel now, so I'm going to make all the asshole content I want now. And uh, my main channel is still going to exist, and I'm still going to make my anarchist content, and I've got a real serious channel coming up as well. But this is going to be my outlet for this shit. So, yeah, I might make a video on Chris Hansen enabling Blair White to make a big nothing burger out of nothing uh, in order to continue her campaign of totally not scaring people about trans people. But just, um, you know, if Chris Hansen wanted to spend his time actually well, yeah, it'd be great if he talked to Thaddeus Russell. It'd be great if he talked to Stephen Kirshner. Those people, they got some issues. And if you wanted to make a joke, you made a good joke. Um, I want to say, first of all, Clint, thank you so much for doing this. Um, oh, my you're, pleasure. You're, uh, both Eliza and I think we agree on this. You're a real hero of freedom for doing this because Li Eliza and I think also agree that the main problem we've talked about this is that people literally will not, they're not willing or able to talk about these subjects at all, which causes tremendous harm to everyone, right? I agree. Um, I want to say that. I want to say, Eliza, um, thank you for doing this. Thank you for the things you've said on Twitter about taking my ideas seriously, at least, to talk about them without agreeing with them necessarily. Um, thank you for not calling me a pedophile and saying I should go into a wood chipper like many hundreds of people have in the last few days. Uh, and we need to talk about this. This is a real serious problem uh, among people who have these ideas about pedophilia under every corner. Uh, it's doing a ton of damage. And, you know, I'm not playing the victim. I'm saying this is terrible for our culture that we have people who basically act as lynch mobs if there's even like the, the faintest possibility that someone might have something to do with pedophilia, and I never have in my whole life, and I have a mountain of evidence to show that. So I wonder what this mountain of evidence looks like, and how it stacks up to the uh, mountain of evidence that was just dropped uh, in that video, and in the support of Roman Polanski, a convicted child rapist and drugger. Um, and in the support of Stephen Kirshner, who wrote a book about advocating adult child sex. If you didn't know, adult child sex kind of relies on pedophilia to 
fucking happen. But I guess that doesn't matter to you because you're a hack. And uh, when it comes right down to it, you'll rely on emotions, which is why that's what you just did. Hero of Freedom, he has you on a fucking show. A real Hero of Freedom would have had multiple people on uh, of differing stances here. Um, and he would have had more, like, crosstalk, more interjection, less simple agreement. But you'll see, uh, coming up here, that that's not what happened. All of you will see that, because uh, I'm the reason anyone is talking about this. And I'll get to that shortly. But I remembered this interview, because it didn't do anything for fucking freedom. And it's not about catching the slightest hint, it's about you and Steven advocating, advocating for kid fucking, for child adult sex. You did that. Nobody, like, inferred that. It wasn't a distant notion. Nobody caught a whiff of pedophilia on the wind. You advocated pedophilia, Thaddeus Russell. And to claim that it's somehow just a mindless lynch mob here to be a, a, a threat to freedom is so fucking disingenuous and evil. But you don't mind being either of those things, which is why you giddily laugh with your fellow cathedral member uh, about the prospect of kid fucking being destigmatized. Remember, you said that the real reason it makes victims is because they liked it. You should have said that to Eliza. Because it would have been funny to watch her try to weasel out of supporting you after that. After just directly saying it. But you know, you already supported Roman Polanski. And that's the prime reason here. That's the prime fucking reason that people were jumping down your throat. Because guess what? You supported Roman Polanski. Lee came to you proffering a circumstance whereby a 13-year-old got fucked by uh, their educational mentor, um, and you said, yeah, it'd be fine. Depends on the child. No, it fucking doesn't. Don't fuck 13-year-olds. It's a real simple standard. Just don't fuck 13-year-olds. You think you can manage that? Because if you can't, you might be a pedophile. Sure. But, um... I, uh, the other thing I want to say about your work, Eliza, is that um, I have been working with sex workers for many years, sex worker activists, and they take quite a different position than you on some things, but the idea of, of taking the issue outside of the purview of the government is completely, as Clint was saying, just the only way we can go forward, because you're absolutely right. The government is not our friend. It is not the friend of children who have been raped. It never has. And in fact, it's facilitated some rape of children, as you well know. Yes. And, and so now that's really what I was at the bottom, what I was raising on Twitter this week. No, it wasn't. On Twitter that week, you were saying that I'm an authoritarian imperialist for being disgusted by adult child relationships in a thread where you were advocating adult child relationships between a 13 year old and their educational mentor. You are totally fine with exploitation and you agree with the fact that exploitation is really not even a concept. You agreed with Stephen Kirshner when he completely rejected the prospect that these things would be exploitative, harmful, or a threat to rights. You have no problem with this. You shouldn't pretend you do. You were doing damage control. That's what was at the base of what you were saying on Twitter that week. Because I kept talking about the age of consent laws. That's what I'm primarily interested in. Um, and I think that the age of consent laws need to be revisited and thought about, and we're not allowed to talk about it. I just raised questions about the age of consent, and I get called a pedophile and lots of death threats. Notice Eliza nodding along. That'll come up shortly. You'll see why she's doing nothing but silent nodding. You'll see. Uh, and so, but you, on the face of it, you can just look at it. There's obviously some, some clear issues. So for instance, age of consent 
even within the United States, varies from 16 to 17 to 18. So two states right next to each other have very different legal regimes about this. Um, Europe, across the board, the ages are much lower than the United States. The United States is an outlier. We have among the very highest age of consent laws in the world. Saudi Arabia is like about the only other one that has it at 18 or 19. Um, I am, I don't know what the right number is. I have never proffered a particular number. Yet you had someone on your show who has no problem with it being as low as one. So clearly the man after your own heart kind of tells us what your heart says. All I know is that there are many, many people on the sex offender registry or in prison who almost all the people who have been calling for me to be killed in the last few days would agree that they had no business being prosecuted in the first place. And a great place to go look about this is a wonderful documentary called Untouchable. It was done by David Feige, a very important documentary filmmaker who was on my show. And it just follows the cases of several people who have been caught up in the sex offender registry who, trust me, you, no one would think, I mean, one was a woman who's now your age, who when she was 19 had sex with a 17 year old boy and she's still wearing an ankle bracelet and she's not allowed to, to be anywhere near a schoolyard, anywhere near a downtown. She can't have visitation rights with her children. She can't get a decent job. It's horrific. And there's lots of people who did things again, like when they were 20, 21, and now they're 50 and they still have an ankle bracelet and it's never going away. It's a lifetime sentence to wear that. So there's a I, ton I that of that's, people. That's important, okay. right? Like that's really, really important. And I think if we push all those mm -hmm. like I peed in public people out, like the like those mm -hmm. those people on the sex offender registry, like there's absolutely no reason that they should be on. And to be brutally honest, I would prefer they they stay the fuck out of my way. To be brutally honest, like I want those people that are on the sex offender registry that for no reason. Like we had sex in, like if two consenting adults are having sex in a car in public and they get on the sex offender registry, they're actually in my way. So if we could just get those people out of my way, we're good. So we agree on that. Does that make sense? What do you, what do you mean they're in your way? They're in my way for tackling human rights violations against young children. Oh, because it's not an important issue. And it's no. in, in the way, right. Oh, in the of scheme course. of things, that's of like, a zero. <laughs> like that's like the least of my concerns. Get them out of my way. Like, I'm this not worried about them. I don't want them clouding up my sex offender registry. In fact, yeah. if anything, I'd rather have an international sex offender registry of folks that are preying on young children, especially in the Bahamas, really impoverished areas. Um, that's more my concern. We're talking about like, so I think those folks that are like having, uh, you know, I, I think so. So we know that. So we're starting off from that same place, right? Mm -hmm. If you peed in yeah. public, I don't want to see you in my face. Like, get out of my way, right? Right, right. So- most of this is, like, exactly okay, but, like, notice that he said 21 and did things. What things, Thad? Because, you know, it, it, it couldn't be that they did anything, you know, that, uh, that the only way that they could be prosecuted would be the age limit, but that they did a bunch of other things that were actually bad, but that weren't prosecutable, or that there wasn't enough concrete evidence of but definitely happened it couldn't be that you know let's just stick with the numbers not look into any of these cases specifically and just pass it off yeah they were 21 that means that whatever they did with minors is okay what what Wh how you're not actually proving your case you're just expecting us to not pay enough attention to what you're saying and seeing like eliza's nodding head that we just move on without asking any fucking questions. I'm asking questions, Thad. Which 21-year-old are you talking about? So it's a, you know, it's an arbitrary, somewhat arbitrary number. Although I wouldn't say it's totally arbitrary. It's basically culturally determined, right? So okay, the so culture I, of I a think country. We should start unpacking that because I think where the okay. where your tweets. And sorry, I'm not trying to call you crazy. Um, where your tweets, I think, I think where people are going to be. Okay, first and foremost, and do you prefer Thad or Thaddeus? Thad. Thad, okay. Thad, um, I feel like where, where folks probably get very confused is that you're trying to have an extremely complex and nuanced conversation on Twitter, right. which is not built for those extremely complex and nuanced conversations. So I think, exactly. so I think um, we can have that here, right? We can have a comfortable, open. I'm not going to judge you. 
hopefully I can meet you where you're at and you can meet me where I'm at and we can start to unpack a little bit more of what we're talking about. So, But see, that's kind of part of the problem is that it's not just on Twitter that this conversation has been happening. He had it with Steven on his show. He had it with Steven on his show. He had it with the Daily Beast with his article defending Roman Polanski and saying, well, you know, the age of consent is different in so many places. The U.S. must be wrong. No, there's, a, there's every likelihood that the U.S. is right. There's every likelihood that 18 is fine. And in fact, I kind of think that's too fucking low for reasons that I can get into and will very shortly after this. But ultimately, yeah, no, you didn't prove shit in saying that it's like just a terrible place to have a nuanced conversation, Eliza. Because that's fucking bullshit. He didn't have it on Twitter first. People were posting his article. He said that. So if he didn't make it nuanced enough, if it was so short that it wasn't making his point adequately, then he would have made it longer. He made his point fine. And then he went to double down on it and say that most pedophilic interactions aren't harmful, rights averse, or exploitative. Or at least that exploitation doesn't matter. He fully agreed with Steven, Eliza. Did you not know that? Or did you not give enough of a shit to actually look into who you were talking about? Or to? Or promoting? Or caping for? Or siding with? Or helping rehabilitate his image on goddamn YouTube? Because if you didn't do your research adequately, you're not advocating for kids very well, are you? So can, can let me um, let me just hop in for a two seconds. I I just want to say yeah. that like that that for me is I think the the valuable aspect of this conversation that that gets overlooked mm -hmm. because people are so uh, this is such a taboo subject. Everyone's like, mm -hmm. well, think about the kids. So then no one cares about these adults that are innocent that have their mm -hmm. lives ruined. And and yeah. obviously everyone cares about the kids here. To take a page from Stephen's notebook. That's not obvious to me. So I don't think right. any I don't think anyone has any disagreement there. So I, I do want to just focus a little bit on the fact that there are, you know, tens of thousands of otherwise peaceful, non-predatory people who yep. can't get a job, who have to declare right. to their neighbors that they're a predator and all sorts of shit. I mean, if Correct. we can't resolve that, I, I think that it, it kind of comes first in that you you kind of need to get rid of that problem before you can actually address the the, the more serious one, which is that children's lives are at risk. So is it more important? Or do we have to address the other one first? Because in triage, you address the most important thing fucking first. Where, where, where are we not supposed to address the most important things first? Fuck, I must have missed the memo. Completely. So I just want to say something before Liza, we do the, the sex offender registry thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, I want people to know what my position is on this. Okay. okay so okay, I, cool. I, sorry even, if I interrupted. <laughs> even, no, 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 no. It's all good. Even though I praised you and Clint for being anti-statist on this question, and I am an anti-statist almost all the time. Okay, except, when you say anti-statist, so I know, do you mean exactly like, what do you mean? Like an an like anarchist. Okay, cool. I'm I'm kind of an I mean I don't like and labels at all. I hate labels. I hate okay, labels. Cool. Okay, I'm just trying to get but, but I feel I'll like tell you, let me this tell you. conversation so, is very nuanced and it's going to get clipped. So I want to make sure we're crystal clear about sure. where the parameters are. I'll tell you. So, I mean, in terms of my politics, I've said this publicly. I'm happy to say this. If I were a congressperson, my record would look like 99% like Ron Paul's. Okay, cool. Okay. Then there's a bunch of other stuff, right? <laughs> I have ideas about culture and society that are different yeah. than libertarian stuff. So I'm very different than a lot of libertarians on other issues. But on economics, public policy, I'm pretty much straight and cap. So okay. that's who I, you know, I think like, okay. Um, here, so, but having just declared that I'm an ANCAP, uh, guess what? <laughs> I have a uh, way of bringing things out of people. Yeah, you do, Eliza. Now, he's going to do the exact opposite of what he said for the beginning part of this. He's going to advocate violence against pedophiles to run cover for the fact that he's been running cover for pedophiles for a long time. 
they're about to have a nice little circle jerk about all the terrible mean things that they would do to pedophiles. But you'll see later Eliza has pretty soft views here. And Thaddeus, we already know that he agrees with Stephen that it's not harmful, rights averse, or exploitative. Stephen is a man after his own heart, after all. So, you know, because I've shown you the context here, that Thaddeus is full of shit. But is that going to stop anyone from thinking this interview is fucking awesome, and that because Thaddeus said the requisite wood chipperish lines after saying you shouldn't say the requisite wood chipper lines, um, that somehow he's a changed man? Yeah. Yeah, they fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Largely because of Eliza being there. Because if it was just two dudes, like, anarchist circles have had these problems for a long time. And if it was just two of the same dudes that you've seen over and over and not the fresh face of Eliza coming in to be the Ann Cap chick of the hour saying that, yeah, you know what? I'm on your side, Thad. This would have looked a lot different to a lot of different people. Well, you brought my, you didn't, but the issue brought the statism out of me. And because my position on this is that maybe we can do it without the state. I don't really see that happening. I'd love it for it to happen. But people who abuse, molest, and rape or rape children need to be put into concentration camps very far away for a very long time. That's my position. Hang on. On, on, on the children part. Then, so that's happening. There Say are that children. Again for the record, because I think that's important. I said it all over Twitter. I said it all. I said it many times all over Twitter. They are hearing uh, you, Daddy. They, Dad, they they're not uh, hearing you because they're too busy uh, calling me a pedophile for no reason whatsoever. For no reason whatsoever. Uh huh. Yeah, you keep saying that. People who actually watched what you fucking said, they know different. Uh, no, uh, they obviously, if you can't control your urge to rape a child, I mean, especially a prepubescent child. Nice little callback to you and Steve's little hebophilia defense, because it's not as bad if they're a little bit older, right? I don't see how that can't be identified as rape, because I don't think the prepubescent children really have an interest in sex. Um, so it's just definitionally rape to me. But what about Steve? What about Steve, Thad? Steve said eight would be fine. Steve said one would be fine. You said he's a man after your own heart. Did you not do research or are you just lying? And then we can talk about teenagers, which is gets murkier, right? But like certainly anybody of any age who is molested, assaulted, or raped, I believe and can't control that urge, has to be separated from society. Now, here's the difference between me and a lot of the people who have been calling for my death on Twitter. What I see, not from you and not from a lot of people uh, who kind of work in your space, and especially women, I think it's mostly men who do this, they seem basically only interested in proving how badly they're going to kill a pedophile. They don't seem to care that much about protecting children. So if I were to come across someone raping a child, I mean... Of course, my first instinct is, i sick of this, fuck a wood chipper. Gun is much easier and cheaper and faster. Unless they're Roman Polanski. Or somebody behaving exactly like Roman Polanski. Then, you might think, oh shit, she's not objecting too loudly, or I wasn't in the room when she said no. How would you even know if it was rape? Because by your definition, you see a guy with a 13-year-old, and it might not be. You sick fuck. Like, you can make these moral platitudes now all you want. But ultimately, you defended some bad shit and got called out for it. That's what really happened here. So let's be extremely and completely crystal clear here that you wouldn't have that as your first instinct. Your first instinct would be to like look at the look at the child and be like, "Hey, hey 13-year-old, you good?" And if the 13-year-old didn't say no or like like <laughs> didn't didn't like seem in distress, you would just walk away by the metrics you set in your conversation with Steven. At the very least, you would just walk away. But, like, you want to rehabilitate your image now? 
with this garbage? I mean, clearly it worked with some people, so <laughs> more power to you, I guess. Well, I mean, no more power to you. You shouldn't have any power at all. Um, but that's not really my primary interest. My primary interest is making sure this never happens again. And so that I don't see, unfortunately, I wish there was some other alter alternative, but I don't see any other way but to forcibly remove those people from society. Now, at the same time, and I also know, partly because of your work and the work of many, many other people, that this is going on. It's not going on on a small scale. No one knows exactly how big, but I'm, I know for sure that it's really, really big. There are a lot of children who are being ass assaulted, molested, or, or raped. And I'm a father. My son's 19. Aw, I didn't know that. So, yeah, so, you know, I mean, for, for people to say that I don't care about kids and they don't, and it's just, I don't even need to get into this. I do not need to defend myself, but um, it's a huge problem that needs to be dealt with. The state fucks it up entirely. And you are about the only person I've ever heard of really in a serious way trying to offer solutions that are non-state. But I'm saying to you, I think actually, I think we do need the state to do something very severe to, very severe to these people. Um, but at the very same time, I am also terribly concerned, as Clint was saying, about the great, and you were saying, the great number of people who are either in prison or have an ankle bracelet on or can't get a job or are simply just their pariahs in their community, right? And it's eternal. It's for the rest of their lives. And I think part of that problem a lot of that problem is I think that our age of consent law might be too high. And I would like maybe, maybe, I'm not even sure, maybe to move more toward the European models. That's it. That's it. Okay. So let me get this straight. They should be forcibly removed from society. But they shouldn't be pariahs in their own community. And in order to solve these issues we should adopt the european model which european model thad which european model thad which european model thad and i don't have answers i don't okay. have an age i don't have a law okay. in fact, i'd rather not have laws but yeah. you know but they may be necessary like i need to put my people in the concentration camp so that's probably a law <laughs> um but um so there are, you know, that's not the only thing I said on Twitter. What it, where it started was. You don't say a lot on Twitter. <laughs> where it started was, is that I have known, and you've probably known, and Clint's probably known, many, many, many people, women and men, over the years, many of them I've known extremely well because I was dating them or married to them, um, who had their first sexual experience as 12, 13, 14, 15 year old with an adult. And they, across the board, don't feel like they were victimized at all. And these are people who are now like my age in their 50s, okay? So they still think this. They don't think there was a victim. They don't think the guy deserved anything. Sometimes, yeah, it was always a guy. Um, Cause a lot of gay men have this. A lot of gay men have this. It's very common among gay men. It's what Milo was talking about. He's just stating a fact that a lot of gay men had their first sexual experience with a man when they were technically children. And I've talked to so many of them who said this to me not only was it not bad, it was a wonderful experience. And what do we do with that? You know, I was, I was with a woman for a long time. Uh, we were the same age, so people aren't getting confusion about this. Uh, we uh, started dating when I was 27 and she was 26. And we stayed together for 15 years. And her first relationship was started when she was 15 and it was with her in, uh, high school English teacher. And it lasted for three years. I think he was in his 30s. Um, a thousand percent illegal. Uh, everybody on Twitter tells me that they would put him through a wood chipper. And I'm telling you that she never once has thought about the relationship as anything other than just a relationship. And so for him to be put in, a, in prison or killed or even ostracized would make no sense to her. And actually seeing, I th I'm pretty sure she would see it as a terrible injustice. And I can tell you stories of many, many other women and men who have told me just that. And so that raises a really hard question. I'm not saying this is an easy answer, right? 
This is a tough, tough question. It's, it's the hardest question. I don't have an answer, but it is a question that we have to deal with because a lot of those people do in fact end up in prison or killed. And do we really want that to happen? What do we do with that? We tell them that we're sorry that their first experience couldn't have been with somebody of an equal experience level to them. That's what we do with that. We try to find the person who did it so that they don't victimize somebody else. And in the case of that high school teacher, fire him. At least get him away from students he's going to try to fuck. That seems goddamn obvious. I don't care that, you know, she, she was your wife. I don't care that you were personally invested in this story. That doesn't mean shit to me. In fact, if we actually want to help children, we have to be objective and not let shit like personal bullshit affect this. So let's be completely fucking clear here and say that none of this means that 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds should be able to be with adults. How this isn't fucking obvious, I, I, I just... I assume that it's because the entire world is okay with throwing their morals away as soon as people they like start saying them. Or as soon as they step into one of these subversion zones, which is anything but. Like, for even saying that I'm disgusted by this, you called me an imperialist. An imperialist authoritarian fad. You're a hack. I don't care about your family. I don't care about your life. I don't care about your wife. In terms of this, I care about the general policies that are going to protect people who need it. And no policy that protects anyone is going to co-sign a 12-year-old, which was the first one you listed. No policy is going to co-sign a 13-year-old, which is what Roman Polanski drugged and raped. I feel like this whole thing is an experiment in gaslighting. Like, suddenly I have to be okay with these despicable things, and if, I, if I'm not, I'm not progressive enough. Fuck that! Let's be super real here and say that this is evil shit you're broaching, and it is serious, and you should think much more about it before just waving the question around as a question in a vacuum and saying Europe as though it's a unified standard. It ain't, and the Vatican recently raised it to 18 because they realized, hey, shit's fucked up. There's scandals everywhere. Maybe we should do something about this. If the Vatican is ahead of you, Thad and Eliza, if the Vatican is ahead of you, you're way too far behind. D does that make fucking sense? Wow. Fucking stunning. And hey, a couple things that might make more sense if you took a math class um, is that... Your chick was 15 when she met this adult who wanted to fuck her at 15. This predator. And then after three years, he didn't want her anymore. Ah, oh, you know, I wonder what 15 plus 3 is. It's almost like once she turned 18, it fell off. Nah, that couldn't be. Couldn't be. And it also couldn't be that science proves that Basically, um, you're much more likely to divorce later uh, if you have sex before 18, and it's still more likely even if it's before 25. Couldn't be. Couldn't be that relationships that start when people don't understand relationships taint their ability to be in other, more healthy relationships. It couldn't be that that's part of the reason it's exploitation, and an unethical violation of their rights, and abuse, it couldn't be. Nah, because that would make my point, and you wanted to make your point. Shit. I hate it when that happens.
Uh, because it's not a simple sentence answer, and especially yeah, it just requires no further elaboration, what, which is what it, we're doing. It, it, sure. it requires a lot of nuance, and especially sure. it doesn't come down to how the child feels. Uh, when we see something like how the child feels, that's going to be a red flag for um, grooming behavior. But what? if you want to talk, have a serious conversation, um, we could talk about the fact that, um, you know, so when we're talking about... Um, the bounds of what Sorry, could can I just be clarify? possible. Sorry, I just want to clarify. That's a super important point. I need to clarify that. So what I meant by that was like this woman I was describing, the child and their consciousness going forward through adulthood. If their consciousness about this thing through adulthood. Yeah, that's not what you said. You, the, the tweet said how it depends on how the child feels. When you add no. child and feels, you come on, that is, that you're a smart I, man. No, I don't need to explain I, this to you. No, I understand that. But yeah. if you look at the context of the tweet, it's obvious that's what I was referring to. I was referring to this woman specifically. Yeah, and but we don't cherry pick when we talk about situations like this because we talk about society as a whole, right? So you're so talking you're not, about a specific instance. And we're so not I'm, talking about how your friend feels. And I know you're close to that person and that's great. I, I mean, I'm a survivor of child sexual, <laughs> sexual human trafficking. I can tell you how I feel. I'm not feeling too good about it right now. So we can always talk about how we feel or we can talk about everybody as a whole, right? So let's talk about the problem as a whole, not how one how one person feels. Does sure. that make sense? Well, I mean, I'm talking about many people, but okay. Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, but I mean, you actually, would you would certainly acknowledge that there are many people who are, you know, 13, 14, 15 that have sex with an adult and then feel as if they were taken advantage of too. Oh, 100%. Okay. okay, so let's focus many, on the many, worst. Many, many. Yeah. Okay, so. so it's looking pretty good here, right? It's shaping up to be a, a kind of, maybe Eliza's going to correct him for once and hold him accountable and bring, bring, bring the reins up and be like, yeah, yeah, Thaddeus. Yeah, Thad, you ain't going to just say the feelings of the child and get away with it. And by the child, we mean definitely the child because you're talking about children. Because... I, I had people on Twitter who were sore with me for saying he was talking about children when he was obviously not talking about children, except that he was talking about fucking children. So, yeah, I mean, but it almost looked for a second like she was going to say something like that, right? You know, like she's going to bring sanity to the conversation. Well, <laughs> get prepared because I was the reason this clip started to float around because I brought up this conversation when the recent scandal with Eliza started to come to light. And I brought it up and Bluey Anon uh, started to post my tweet places and like post my threads and eventually looked up the interview itself um, and found this uh, clip. And I'm the reason that that blew up. I'm the reason people know about Eliza saying this right now, and not just about her probably lying about uh, being a trafficking victim. Because generally speaking, uh, she started to um, go into some graphic detail about how we should decide whether or not a child should be fuckable. And uh, in this particular case, it's a doozy. And it goes really right into the libertarian stereotype of, well, what if the child can sense though? Uh, you say no to both the child and the adult. That's what you do. You, you, you have that modicum of sanity and you just say no. No! Fuck you! You're not gonna fuck a child. That's what you do. But what did she say? Well, her whole deal right here is very explicitly apologetic for a very specific group of pedophiles and i want you to listen real close to what she's saying here so let's let's pretend like we all have our like utopia so if if, if i could answer this in utopia right in my like uh you know perfect in cap utopia each community each community and each um so it'd be each caregiver parent and community including teachers um potential faith leaders and neighbors will decide if the child is ready to consent and, and look at the child's behavior. Do they have a job? How is their education going? Are they, cogn are they cognitively available to have uh, sex with this individual? And then um, also look at the history of the individual as well. So does this, um, does this individual have a history of abuse? Um, yep. and, and you go from there. Yep. So that's I the answer. Um, and I feel 
that these are conversations because, um, you know, in different cultures, um, you cannot turn your back on different cultures and you have to respect them. But in an ANCAP society, you also have to expect that if someone engages in a relationship where it's not um, seen by the community, by the very small community as uh, agreed upon, you have to accept the consequences. That's oh, the answer. I, I agree with everything you just said 100%. That's I mean, the answer, that's, but, but you weren't adding that nuance, but that you were not adding that nuance on Twitter and you know it. And I'm not trying to be mean to you. Like I'm cool. Like we're cool, but I'm just like, okay. you were adding yeah. that on, you weren't adding that in. And I was like, yo, that's a smart person. Like, why is he, why are you dropping the ball? Maybe it's because you didn't have anyone to talk to about it. I'm here to talk to you about it. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> in, in a perfect no. in that world, we could all agree. So and honestly, that. I wish that communities were small like that and involved in their children's lives. I truly feel that child sexual abuse, child sexual abuse material and human trafficking would diminish by quite a bit. And that's partly why I'm ANCAP, right? That's what led me to this because I see the yeah. government's fumbling this. And, and do I feel that some adult, that some minors are more equipped to engage in sexual activity with adults than others? Yes. But we always look at the, at the most. Um, so when we set those numbers, right? We set them uh, for life expectancy. So life expectancy has changed. Also in different countries, different children have different ex like things expected upon them. So children yeah. can be expected to clean, work, and maybe not even getting educated because they're expected to raise their siblings because their sure. parents are working in fields. So when we're comparing to other countries, we have to put that all into the play. Does that make sense? 100%. In yeah. some countries, they're expected to get married when they're 12, right? 100%, I mean, yeah, so we have to sure. put all this. So so in a society where we're all living, um, like, I guess, ANCAP or like ANCAP, um, you know, I'm expected to live as neighbors with folks that might marry at 12. Yeah. And then we have to, and so the way that that works is you decide whether or not your neighbor. So eventually, if you decide, okay, this community over here is on some heavy, um, exploitation of children then as a community as the neighbor you would take over that community and that's oh, okay. it. sure well, my, my I mean, buddy my good my buddy jose galasan from no way jose uh, tweeted out and a bunch of people agreed with it i don't know how i feel about it i kind of lean towards his uh his option here he says that the the age of consent is whatever age i decide that it's irrational to put a yeah. bullet in the brain of the person I, that's sleeping with you my know child. what and you know what? I, I, I think I said I agree with that. I have no problem with that. So that's where I'm going to end my coverage. Because, A, I've been at this for days, many days now. Feel free to throw some cash in the uh, donation links and support this content. But, B, that pretty much just encapsulates Eliza Blue's insanity. And the depths of insanity that you have to go to to defend Thaddeus Russell. Because she was saying that the community should, should decide. She was saying that the community should decide. And agreeing with Thaddeus Russell that a community which decides that kids can fucking marry at 12. We have to live next to them. And then she sort of backpedals. She says, you know... In an ANCAP society, if we don't like what our neighboring communities are doing, we can just take them over. Bitch, where? I don't remember. You're going to have to refresh me on this part of the ANCAP literature. You're going to have to refresh me on the part where we get to take over neighboring communities. But I think you know that's kind of bullshit, too, because it's like you just said you have to live next to people who might want to fucking marry at 12. I mean, I certainly don't have to. And if I found out that was happening, they probably wouldn't be able to marry anyone again. So then, you know, just to be super clear, the bitch who kicked me out of the anarchist group message on Twitter, that bitch was Jose Gallison. And it's because I shared that link uh, to his Roman Polanski article in the replies to a thread where Jose was promoting his dumb fucking show, which is nothing but a clout farm, basically, and where he has had multiple guests defending Thaddeus Russell as well. Um, and he had Thaddeus Russell on for numbers to discuss Emma Goldman, as though there weren't better people to have on. Um, and he called me 
an insufferable faggot. Because I had the audacity to link an article from a person he had on his show. Showing that this person wants to lower the age of consent, wants to soften 13-year-olds having sex so that he can soften Roman Polanski, and Jose Gallison is not a good example of an anarchist anything, much less a good example of an anti-pedophile activist. Because guess the fuck what, if that's what he was, he wouldn't have had pro-pedophile activists on his fucking show. And make no mistake, that's exactly what Thag qualifies as after having somebody on his show who wrote a book promoting it. After promoting it himself in an article. After promoting it himself in his interview with the guy who wrote the book. Agreeing with him. Calling him a man after his own heart. Saying nothing but yeah. Not pushing back. None of that got brought up in this conversation though, did it? Because that's what these people are. They're clout farmers. It's not about helping kids if you're willing to help the people who hurt kids. Can we agree on that? Because if we can't agree on that, if we can't agree on the baseline premise that we should be philosophically consistent in that which we choose to put into our own personal content spaces, then how the fuck are we going to talk about nuance or conversations? This is the reason I don't get invited on shows. Because I'm well willing to just blow up the spot. I'm well willing to just be like, yeah, you know what? This fucking sucks. Y'all fucking suck. And black, black pill people, I'm, I'm, I'm a negative person. Sure, but I'm fucking right. And I'm not going to pretend I'm not. I'm not going to wilt like a flower and I'm not going to back down. And this should be enough to serve as a thorough explanation of why these circles are full of shit. Especially about protecting children and opposing pedophilia. Because if they'll consistently promote the same kinds of standards that let places like Epstein Island thrive. Like yeah, I'm pretty sure that community agreed to it. I'm pretty sure that the Vatican agreed to 12 back when that was their age of consent. But then, you know what happened? They found out that 12 was leading to a bunch of pedophilia scandals and a bunch of boy raping scandals and that maybe they should increase the age. And now they've modernized and it's 18. Hella fucking Luya! They're miles ahead of y'all! So... My final note, my closing note here, at an hour and fucking 45 or something like that. Shape the fuck up. Be consistent in your opposition of pedophilia. Don't platform that which is going to encourage it at all ever. Do your research as to who you're interviewing and what they said, what they think. Don't just dismiss anyone who has anything negative to say about them these people involve people in the conversation who you don't like how about that but they won't do any of this they would much rather clout farm they would much rather have the uh sort of mill going off saying that this is the way it should be the the ancap societies that take each other over they don't do that The ANCAP societies where you have to live alongside 12-year-old fuckers. That doesn't exist. The ANCAP anarchist or whatever world where child exploitation doesn't exist because we just don't call it exploitation. Where it's not considered abuse at all. Where it's not considered a violation of their rights. For a high school teacher... To take advantage of a 15-year-old girl and then drop her like a hot rock at 18. This isn't anarchy you want. This is your edgy echo chamber you want. And that's why you removed me from it. 
That's why you remove anyone from it and throw anyone out who has anything negative to say in this regard. And it's why I had to go to the places I went this week to even get this shit publicized. Because after years and years and years of trying to blow the whistle on this, I finally broke out into the mainstream about it, and I'm the reason people are talking about this interview. Because I don't give up. I'm not going away. I'm not budging. And I don't give a shit if you like it or not. How's about that for a conversation? Give it a few, uh, few days to unpack. You might be heading somewhere very soon. Anyway, this is the new channel. This is the new content. I'm going to try to build a better workflow, but, uh, you know, I'm not sorry. I'm not going anywhere, and I'm not wrong. And if you expect this sort of thing to go away because you snuffed it out with your echo chamber interviews on your small channels, you got another thing coming. I keep all the motherfucking receipts, and I am not sorry. Smash the motherfucking state.